of hey on the base. Hey on the base, or a little below the middle of the page. Itmar, it's the last thread on the line. Itmar was stated by Amiran. We have a machlekes Amiran. Machlekes Abay and Ragas. We'll see. Itmar was stated. Hana habale ladem bal karfei. Person gets benefit from something, but he didn't have an option. Um, the Rabbi Kanano gives us a, a scenario. He's walking, and the smell of of uh, spices, incense from Avedazara is coming into his uh, into his nostrils. So, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. So it's Balkar Chai. And the question is, well, we have to see what the case is. It, it's coming to him against his will. And the question, well, it's coming to him in a scenario where he didn't choose to be in that scenario. But now maybe he's enjoying it. Maybe he's not enjoying it. What's the, what's the status of that, uh, of that involvement? So Abaya Amar Muteras Rav Amrasa. Abaya says it's Mutter. Rabbi says it's also, we have to see the case. There's four possible cases for this. Case number one, Efshir become a Efshir is the worst case. Efshir means you didn't have to go down this road where the, where the church was, where the, you have to go to that mall, uh, whatever. Become a and when you're there, you start to enjoy it as well. So you're paying attention to to, to smell it, to hear, or whatever. We'll see this. So you chose that path. Yeah. Efsher, there's two parts to it. Efsher is you chose it. You could have gone a different way. You come a chavin, and while you're there, you're you're uh, you're intending to enjoy it. The another, the next case is lo yefsher become a You really had no other path. This is the only road out of the city. Um, you needed to go. This you didn't have a choice. However, come a so in both of these cases, he's intending to enjoy the, the, the situation. everyone holds it In other words, according to this version of the machlekes between Abai and Rava, we'll have a second version soon. According to this version, the kavana does everything. If you had kavana, it's asr. If you intended to enjoy it. Here's the best case, right? You didn't have another option, and you're also not intending. There was only one road out of the city, and you don't want to have this uh, enjoyment either. You're trying, you're that you have no uh, no intention to enjoy this. So we're, we're left with what's the machlekes, the bayan rava. If everyone holds over there, it's for sure us, or over here, it's for sure mutter. Keep pligi. When do they argue? The efsha v'leimachavim. You had another route. You could have gone a different way, but you're not mechavan at all once you're here. You happen to choose the route that takes you by the Avedah Zara that has the incense, and while you're here, you don't, uh, while you're there, you don't, you don't intend. Now we have a general machlekes between Rabbi Yehud and Rabbi Shimon. If Dover Shein and Meskavan is us, it's, we had it in Hilcha Shabbos, but apparently it spreads over to other things as well, not just Hilcha Shabbos. If you do a malacha or if you do something without intention, according to Rab Shimon, Dovashen Muskavan is mutter. You didn't intend, it's permissible. According to Rabbi the Dovashen Muskavan is also. Usually that was a case where you open the refrigerator and the light turns on. You did a, you, you did a malacha, but not intentional. You didn't want to do any malacha. You, you wanted to open the fridge. You wanted to get the gefilte fish out or whatever. So, but the light turned on. It ain't, ain't a miscam. So we said that, well, it's a psikresha. We had all of those. Uh, it's impossible. Um, but Rabbi Yehud holds davrashen miskavan is aser, and Rabbi Shimon holds that it's mutter. So if I'm not miskavan, but you chose to go on that path, it's efsher, but you're not miskavan. So according to Rabbi Yehud, I don't care if you're not miskavan. If you don't have intent, it's still us. So it's a violation. The question is, what about according to Reb Shimon? Reb Shimon held that if you don't intend, then you didn't do anything. So here also, you didn't intend. 
Ali Bidar Shimon, that Bidar Shimon is Kavan Mutter. So Abaya Kareb Shimon. Abaya says it's Mutter. You didn't intend. That's Rib Shimon Shita. According to Rib Shimon, the way to remember this was Rib Shimon was Primia Satira. So he cares about the intention. The intention is important. So according to Rib Shimon, if he didn't intend, he didn't do it. Rabbah says he didn't get what Rib Shimon is saying. You had a choice to go on a different path, a different route, and you chose this one. Now, it's true, while you're here, you didn't intend. But the fact that you made the choice beforehand means that it's awesome. Because before you even came on this, you could have gone a different way. Shimon only says Davashin and Miskav and his mother if you had no other option, but you chose this way. Yeah, there was a, um, a conversation between, I forget, maybe it was Alman Chakler or something, and uh, Simon Jacobson. He said, um, uh, he said, why are you doing these things? You know, Alman Chakler was the renewal. He had like the, all types of new, new ideas, very creative ideas. So he said, um, you have to be enclosed in the, uh, in the misbara. You know, you have to, when you're trying to refine something, you have to get dressed up in the in the in what's being refined. So I have to behave like them to be able to, to refine it. So Simon Jacobson told them that's the case, he wouldn't be enjoying it so much. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's it's lay You know what I'm saying? That's the case. It's lay You didn't have the he has no other route, he has to do it. Question is, what happens now? Are you machavan now or, or not machavan? <laughs> so here we're talking about, yeah, it's really the, different. It's not the same scenario. Here you have, you had an option beforehand, but right here, you're not, you're not Mechavim. Right here, you're not Mechavim. Okay. We have Machlekes, Abay and Rava, what's the chat in Reb Shimon? for those that say, Efsher, in other words, we're going to learn the machlekas a little different. We chose from these four scenarios, four possibilities. Two of them have kavana, and two of them don't have kavana. The two of them that have kavana is definitely yasa. From the two that don't have kavana, it depends if you had a choice beforehand or not. If you didn't have a choice beforehand, and you don't have kavana, for sure it's matter. And the one machlekas was only if you had a choice before, but right now you're not being the kavana. The next way is a little different. Also, you have the four, four possibilities. Actually, I'm only going to call three. Ikadamri, Efsha Valay Machab, and Haina Puktai, the Rabbi, the Rabbi Shimon. If you had a different possibility, but you didn't have Kavana, could have gone a different route. But now that you're here, you're not Machabin at all. So, this is exactly the case of Rabbi Huda and Rabbi Shimon. Because Reb Shimon says mutter, not like Rav said before, that Reb Shimon over here would say it's also because you had a possibility not to go this way. No, Reb Shimon says it's 100% mutter. And Rabbi Huda says it's 100% also because he doesn't care about what your kavan is. If you didn't, when you didn't have kavan, it's still also. Uh, yeah, that's the machlech. If you didn't have a possibility, which other, which you don't have two streets to walk down. You know, there's only one street. That takes you and you pass by the church that has the incense and all of that. And when you get there, you're not machavan either. So everyone says it's mutter. Sorry, keep pligi. Where's the machlekes? The loyef serve become machavan. You didn't have another possibility, but while you oh, this is the case that we said. But while you're there, you start to enjoy it. Now you didn't have an option. So how could anyone say that it's mutter? Let's see. How can anyone say? I mean, you're enjoying it. Reb Shimon holds that Kavana makes the difference. So Kavana makes the difference. Kavana makes the difference. So here you are, Mechavan. Here you're, it was Loyafshir. It was impossible. You only had one route, but for Kamachavan. But while you're there, you're enjoying. So according to Reb Shimon, Kavana makes the difference. So it's 100% Asa. Keep Pligi. So where's the Machlaikas? Aliba the Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Now we're going to get an interesting chiddush, according to Abaya. Aliba the Rabbi Yehuda, Malishna Miskavan, Malishna Shein Miskavan. 
F shirt us, sir. Here we're going according to Rabbi Yehuda. Here we're talking about a case where it's it's impossible, and when does Rabbi Yehuda hold that it's us? Rabbi Yehuda says never seen a is us. If you didn't have intention, it's us. Rabbi Yehuda only said that in a case when I had a different opportunity. I could have done it differently. I had other options. Different options. But over here, I didn't have another option. So Rabbi Yehuda would say that over here, you're not machat. Look, why, a buyer learns Rabbi Yehuda like this. If you didn't have kavana, why is it also? So because you had options before you came into this into this uh, situation. You put yourself into this situation because you had other choices. But, so in other words, what a buyer is doing is he's not saying that the act without kavana is chayev. It's decisions before you came into this into this situation that, that makes you chayev. So you only chayev, according to Rabbi Yehuda, is if you made decisions beforehand. But over here, you didn't have any options beforehand. Abayah Rabbi Yehuda, Abaya says, like Rabbi Yehuda, who holds that kavana is not necessary, but he also holds that no kavana is also not necessary. Usually we say, Rabbi Yehuda even without Kavana. Usually Rabbi Yehuda is much stricter. Abai is saying no, Rabbi Yehuda is more lenient. Why? Because over here, even though I'm being, over here, um, being Mechavan, I do have Kavana. But Rabbi Yehuda doesn't care about Kavana. What does Rabbi Yehuda care about? As you see, he holds the Rosh Hashanah and Mishkayev. That means he doesn't care about Kavana. That means even if I have Kavana, I'm still Pater. It's the opposite of what. Well, why am I potter? Because I didn't have any option of how to get into the situation. I only had one, one, one road. So, Baik Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Amalach, Rabbi says, "How can I come, Rabbi the Shem Miskaven, Kim Miskaven, Al Luchumra, Abu Miskaven, Kishen Miskaven, Lakul Alai?" Maybe Layama. Like he never said that. Rabbi Yehuda was only strict. He says that even if you don't have kavana, you're still fine. You open up the refrigerator door. Well, over there, that's different. That uh, the refrigerator that everyone holds is because it's in secretion. What's the name? Scaven. Um, I don't know. Remember those papers on the floor? That, uh, the wet papers on the Shabbos. There was outside with papers on the floor. They picked them up. So it could be they tore while you were picking them up. But you were not having to tear it. You didn't want to, like, you weren't, you weren't you know, your kavana wasn't tear race. Your kavana was the, the tour on the way. So you weren't having to tear it. So Rabbi Yudha would say, oh, it's also because, because it's, uh, yeah, well, that's the interesting thing. Aina Miskavin is similar to Grama. I intended to do one action. Along the way came another action. That's why somebody stopped somebody from um, trying it because they didn't want it on them. It will... uh-huh. Uh-huh. Very good, Yitzhi. <laughs> so, so, according to Reb Shimon, according to Reb Shimon, you're in a mishkab and it's mutter. Is it going to definitely tear? No, it's not going to definitely tear. So over here, what we're dealing with is you're going down a road that has uh, Avedo Zara, smell of Avedo Zara, you know, all over that street. You had no other option because there is only one road that gets you out of town. While you're there, you're Mechavah. So while you're there, you're Mechavah. So what would Reb Shimon say over here? Kavana is for sure. Also, you mamish had the worst, uh, you, you had Kavana. Reb Yehuda says, according to Rava, Rabbi Yehuda says, well, kavana or no kavana doesn't matter. You're always chayim. You're always chayim. Comes along Abaya and says, no. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't care about kavana. So even if you have kavana, you're still pata, if you had no other option. That's the chidosh. Amar Abaya mina aminala. Abaya says, where do we know this? Betanya, he has a good source, a very good source. We have a b'risa. Rabbi 
he was using, Rabbi Yechon Medzaka was teaching his students in the shade of the Hechel. When the sun would come up and the Hechel was tall and it was on a mountain, and he would be in the shade of the Hechel and he would be able to teach in the shade of the Hechel. The Hechel is the Beis Amikdash. He's using the Beis Amikdash for personal use. Yes, so, he had no other area to sit in because he needed a large area. And and he is having Kavana to use the shade. He has no other option, but he's Mechavan. This is exactly the Machlekes Abay and Rava. And Bishari, obviously it was Mutter. Shari means Mutter. That means Abay is correct. That according to Reb Shimon, your Mechavan is Bishar Asr. According to Reb Yehuda, This is what a biased opinion is. Really, you shouldn't be allowed to enjoy the shade of the Hechel, but because you had no other option, and according to Rabbi Yehuda, Kavana doesn't make it better or worse. I know you have Kavana, but that doesn't do anything. The, pro- the thing is that you had no other option. So that's going to be permissible. Rav Amar, Shani Hechel, the Lutechas, Rav says, enjoying the shade of the Hechel is not a problem. You're not allowed to go into the Hechel. And because the, the, the roof of the Hechel and the walls, that would be to protect the inside. When you're on the outside and you're walking under the shade, that's not considered getting benefit from the shade of the Hechel. That's, it wasn't inte- that wasn't, wasn't built with that, with that purpose, and therefore, so it's not us to get that benefit. I guess the incense was made to enjoy the smell. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. It's so Rav is Rav is saying that there's a derech ana. There's a way. Remember, we were learning before. There's a way of a normal way of having ana. So the normal way of having ana from incense is to smell it. The normal way from having ana from a building is to go inside it. You're going outside it to have ana. That's the ab, that's an abnormal way of getting ana. It's not a problem. Okay. I'm a Rava. Rabbi says, Mina Minala. Rabbi, now Rabbi's turn to say, how do I know that it's Asr? He says, the Tanya. Second. Right. It's kind of the second way. Yeah. yeah, we follow the second way throughout the whole thing, and then at the end we get back to the first one. It says, Lulin Hayapsuchin, Balia space Kachia Kadashin, Shabem Shalshnas, Umnim Betavis Kadishli, is in my name, a base Kachia Kadashin. What happened was, yeah, we had this, I don't remember where. In Midas, we had it, or, or we had it in, maybe in, uh, maybe in Tamit also. What happened was the, the, they needed maintenance in the Kedesh HaKadosh. So they would have to go in and fix the gold that was on the walls. So they would let down um, through the roof, they would open up uh, the, the ceiling and they would let them down in a, in a box that would be open just against the wall where they could fix whatever they needed to fix against the wall. And it says over there that they should not feast their eyes on the, on the Kodesh HaKadashim. That means they could only face the wall that they were fixing. They couldn't look around. The Gemara says, well, it's very obvious that you don't have another option here. Right? You got to get inside. And we're concerned that you may look around the Kamachav and Ba'asr. You may look around and enjoy the Kedusha Kedashim and it's us. You'll be getting benefit, enjoyment from your from gazing at the Kedusha Kedashim. That would be prohibited. So Rav is saying, you see, even though you you didn't have another option, but you you may intend, and that's going to be us. Now, I would say, well, that's the opinion of Rav Shimon that holds intention is us. How do you know it's But Rav Yehuda would also have to explain why did they do that. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, according to the way of violence, that's 100% mutter. Because I don't care what your intention is. You had no other option. You're fine. And according to Rabbi, no. According to Rabbi, it's also. So that's Rabbi's truth. The Gemara says, V'tizbara, do you really think so? Sound. Vision. And smell don't have me'ila. So there's no problem here anyway. There's no me'ila. Me'ila means to have personal benefit from things that are holy. There's no problem here anyway. 
The Gemara says, "Ela my loss of base kachik gadashim." It must be that it's just this, a uh, an extra stringency that they had in the kaidash kadashim. But there's anyways no prohibition here. So Rubber loses his whole uh, his whole raya based because we asked the question that there was no problem anyway. So what's the reason why they're doing this? It's just an extra thing. Ikadamnida, those that say a little different. Amar Rava mina aminala. Rava said, how do I know that this is accurate, that according to Rabbi Yehuda, it's going to be Yasser? The Tanya, starting the Bryce, Rabbi Shem ben Pazim, Rabbi Shem ben Leib, Mishim bar Kapara, Kol Omar Varechim ben Mishim Mi'ila. Sound, vision, and smell don't have Mi'ila. Mi'ila is when you have personal use. To look at something, to smell it, to hear it, that's not considered personal use. Maybe you're enjoying it, but that's not considered an enjoyment that you're getting from the from the substance. So, me'ila hudaleka. That means you don't have me'ila. But obviously, it's still prohibited. My love, is it not? We're talking about even those people that had to go inside because they needed to fix up the cracks that are, were in the, in the gold plate that was over the walls. So, and nevertheless, it was still Aser. Uh, and Even though you had no other option, but the fact that you were going to enjoy it would be prohibited. It's not talking about that case, that the people, in other words, when it says the Mara that you're going to get, that's not talking about the, 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 the vision that you're going to have and that enjoyment, which obviously is Aser. It's not talking about the people that needed to go inside People that are standing outside that are trying to look in. Hey, Gufa. Go back to a statement I said before. We always said that Gufa was Amirai. Now, this is, uh, I guess Rabbi Shobin Levi is an Amirai. Rabbi Shobin Levi is an Amirai. Yeah, even though he's in Mishnah, he's in uh, Perkiyavis, but he's in Brysis. He's not considered. He's, yeah, he, did, he, did, he didn't make it to the Mishnahis. In the last Perk of Perkiyavis, yeah, maybe I'm a Basco, but that's Shanu Chacham and Belashana Mishnah. It's a, really a Brysis. It's not a Mishnah. It's not a Mishnah. Okay, so that answers that. Kol Umaro Reach Eim Bamishu Megillah. The statement here, the name of Rabbi Shoban Levi, the name of Bar Kapara, is that sound. I, I know he's in the Mishnayas. I know he's in the in the Brises because Tanya by Tanya by Kaparayim, but I don't know if he's in the. It says Mishames. Right. Right. I don't know. I think he was a student of Rebbe. I think by Kapara was a student of Rebbe, which would make it borderline. We'll check the charts. <laughs> so he says that sound, vision, and smell don't have meila. says Smell doesn't have meila. Because we're fine with the other ones, but what about smell? we have a If someone makes his own kateris, remember when we got the, the frankincense? So, Still sitting in the library, by the way, if you want to see it. So, so Rabbi Marla was concerned. What are you guys doing? What are you, what are you doing? I want us making sure we weren't making the Kataris. There's a prohibition that you're not allowed to make the Kataris in the same um, ratio, in the same proportions. So if you make the Kataris l'islamid, but just to practice, or you want to give it over to the community when you're done. So then, Pater, you don't get uh, the prohibition. It's a very strict pro prohibition. It says Chayiv Karis. Isha Shayasa Kamayo Lariachba Venichras. He gets Karis if someone makes the Kataris very strict. Uh, however, if it's Lariachba, if he makes it for his own smell, to make to perfume his house or whatever, so then he's Chayiv. The one that. Yeah, yeah. You did it privately, but you're going to pass it on to. So then he's Chayiv, the one that makes it. I don't know what the person's called, the one that mixes the spices, the spice mixer. What is it? Mixologist. So 
a spicy air. <laughs> so, Vamiriach ba pater. The one that smells it is pater. It's only the one that mixes it, the one that makes the proportion. Ela shemal, he's pater, but he's but he has the prohibition of the mehila. Now he's pater from karas, but he smelt it and he has mehila. That means mehila applies personal benefit applies to smell. So he's you knows the prohibition of making the karas for personal use is only the making and it's not the smelling of it. But nevertheless, the one that smells it violates mehila. Kasha on Bar Kapara, Rabbi Shob and Levi, name of Bar Kapara, that says that there's no meal on smell. Elamar of Papa Kola, Marim Bem Shemil, Bishem Bem Mam Shpreyah. What we did was um, we dropped Reyah. We said that sound and vision don't have meila because there's no substance there. However, Reyah, Laacha Shetala Timurasai, once it's already burnt, and the smoke has already gone up. In ba mishamila, hayovanasas, hayovanasas mitzvase, because the mitzvah was performed already. So in other words, it is possible that reyach doesn't have meila, but originally it would have meila. Smell that would have meila. Yeah. Knows kol mara doesn't have meila ever. Kol sound and mara has no meila. Reyach could have meila, but once the smoke has already gone up. And it's Nasus Mitzvah and it doesn't have Meila anymore. Because once the mitzvah is performed, then they then the uh, there's no Meila anymore. Now um so the note on the Steinzelt said um, said oh this is scientifically as well because vision and and sound is waves, light uh, light waves or, or uh, sound waves, but smell is from the particles particles themselves. So me'ila would apply to the substance itself, but not to the waves. The waves is not the substance. Huh? The Gemara knows uh, the uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum. What's it called? Tell us how. It's not, a, it's not on the list. It's not on the list. I think it was a reason for why you should put them in. Dr. Stein is asking if seeing seeing the tzitzis is a myth. So it's definitely not in the 613. Sorry that you had to have that question. I apologize. <laughs> right. 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 But let's say you have the beged. Do you fulfill a mitzvah by looking at it? Uh, Is there any mitzvah that's just from looking at? Yeah, but that one maybe is a mitzvah of enjoyment. It's a mitzvah to say a bracha when you enjoy, when you enjoy it. That may, uh, no, but those are also those are enjoyment. Those are brachas that you make on enjoyment. That would be saying like it's a mitzvah to eat apples. No, no it's uh, I say a bracha when I eat. I say a bracha when I see it. I say it, right when I see a teacher. Oh, lali, lali rice. You may be right. Uh huh. Interesting. That's interesting. Uh -huh. Right. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm wondering about that. Okay, Lemaimer, the Gemara now asks, Kol hecha denasas mitzvah be misha meila. We, we just said that once the smoke goes up of the Qatar, as soon as no more me'ila because the mitzvah was done. But is that really so? That once the mitzvah is performed, there's no more me'ila? Maybe there's me'ila even after the mitzvah is performed. What about Chumas Adeshin? Every morning, they would go up to the uh, base of Mikdash. They would take a shovel full of the ashes and they would remove it and they would put it down on the side of the Mizbeach. We say it in the Qatar, right? Put it 
the summer it's on the mizbeach, they would put it on the side of the mizbeach. That's the Shuma Sadefin. Now, the mitzvah was performed, the Ksiva Summer it's on mizbeach, and it says that it shouldn't spread out. You place it so that you shouldn't have, an, uh, you place it down, you shouldn't have enjoyment from it. That's what we learned from the summer. That you put it down, you can't have it one second, but I already did the mitzvah already. So it would, it's like two in Geniza. It needs to be buried or something, but you can't have enjoyment. Why can't I have enjoyment? The mitzvah was performed. I already went up with the shovel. You're right. But Chumas Adeshin is an exception that even though the mitzvah was performed, you still can't have benefit from it. However, I can't learn from that to everywhere else. There's something called the Binyana or Ramah Matzino. would say, well, we find by Chumas Adeshin that you can't have benefit afterwards. So too, the rest of the Torah, we say, no. You can't learn from Chumas Adeshin. Why? Because they have Chumas Adeshin plus something else, and which is considered Shnei Suvim, Shnei Ksuvim Abam Kechad Ein Malamdim. If it wanted to teach me to the rest of the Torah, it would have said it once. The fact that it said it another time meant to tell me that those are exceptions. It doesn't, it, the reason why it said it tw- twice is to tell me, don't learn from it. Chuma Sedeshen, Hadi Amr. Chuma Sedeshen is what you just told me, that you can't have enjoyment from it even after the mitzvah was performed. Special exception. What's the second one that makes it that I can't learn from it? It's a big dekuna. The clothing of the Kayan Gadol after he goes into the Kedush HaKadoshim, he wears four garments. The rest of the service, he wears eight garments. Usually he wears eight garments. But in the Kedush HaKadoshim, he wears four. four. It says he takes off those garments, and he puts them down. Now, what does that mean? That means that you can't, they can't be used again. Aha. Uh-huh. That means that even though the mitzvah was performed with them, they can't be used anymore. We have two sources of Nasus Mitzvah say that, that, you can't use, that uh, you can't have benefit from it, and therefore ain't malamdim. Umar says, honey, chalala rabbanan da amri malam shatunim geniza. It's actually machlaikas. According to the rabbanan, you're right, tunim geniza. Those clothing need to be placed over there. They can't be used again. El the rabdaisa, the palagalayo da maravaru ruyin hein l'kayin hadiyay. But according to rabdaisa, that says that the kain gadol doesn't use them for another Yom Kippur. But a kain hadyat is allowed to use them. So what are you telling me that once the mitzvah is performed, you can't have benefit from them? One second. Okay. Uh, someone else can use them. There's, n- there's no source. You're left with only Chuma Sedeshin. Chuma Sedeshin should teach me to the whole Torah. You can't use them another year. According to him, you don't have two sources that would tell me that ain't malamdim that I can't learn from there. And therefore, it would end up being that even the mitzvahs, even though the mitzvahs perform, you still can have a uh, benefit, would be a kasha back on the ketores. Well, we have another source. We'll get rid of the big day kahuna. Chuma sedeshin, we said, you can't have benefit even though the mitzvah was performed. It's too in Geniza. I think it actually got swallowed up over there in the ground. And the other source is Egla Ruf. Egla Ruf is if a person dies in between cities, so the elders of the city need to go out and measure, and then they take a calf and they uh, break the neck. Over there. Now, from that calf, you can't have benefits from it. Uh, so, okay, now we have two sources. You can't have benefits from that calf, even though the mitzvah was performed already, you already broke the neck of it, and you, you had the, the valley, it was right in the valley, or, or a land that was never uh, plowed. And and Shumas Adeshin, two sources that after the mitzvah is performed, you can't have benefit, which tells me that in other places, once the mitzvah is performed, you can have benefit. I mean, you can have benefit, you can smell the kataras after it was already uh, burnt. Right. Right. That's because the Pasuk tells me that you can't eat it. Over there, the Pasuk told me that I can't eat it, even though Nasus is mitzvah. Maybe 
maybe asking what you're asking is like this. Why do you have to tell me these cases that aren't clear in the Torah? You have to learn them from Drushas. Why don't you just tell me Shor and Niskal? You stone it and you can't have benefit from it. That would be uh, Ein Malam. That would be another source. For, and, and once I have another source, Ein Malam. An interesting question. Yeah, see, you missed you missed a good one. I know, but what we're learning from these things is the sum you have to put it next to the Mizbeach and then and you can't have benefits from it. Okay, so good. So that's a source that I can't have benefit from. Even though the mitzvah was the mitzvah was to take it off. Unless maybe, maybe the answer is that those, these two, Truma Sadeshan, and let's say it was Big Day Kahuna, or let's say it's like La Rufa, the mitzvah was one moment. The mitzvah was you take the ashes off and you put them down. The mitzvah was performed. There's no more mitzvah here. Now I learned that I'm not allowed to have benefit from it, even, even though the mitzvah was performed. By the Shara Niskal, Oh, the Shara Niskal, it's, it's, it's different. Shara Niskal is not something that's sanctified. We're learning things that are sanctified, right? Dr. Stein, you hear? Something that's sanctified, the, the ashes that are on the Mizbeya, were sanctified, they're on the Mizbeya. I can't have personal use from them. Shara Niskal doesn't, wasn't something that was sanctified. Shara Niskal is something that I need to, uh, that I need to kill. But that's like saying, uh, no, no, we're talking about having personal benefit from something that belongs to the to the base amigdash. And we're saying that, well, once you've used it already for its purpose, for example, the ashes were already put down on the floor, the garments of the Kain Gadol. Now that, but now we said the Egla Rufa, the Egla Rufa doesn't belong to that unless it's like some sort of sacrifice, which is not. Is the Egla Rufa sanctified? No. You're right. Now back to the question. Questions back on. So, but maybe the answer is, maybe the answer is that um, that those I had a moment to a, a moment of a mitzvah, and the mitzvah was performed. Maybe by the shor niskal, it's not a, a moment of a mitzvah. The shor niskal it killed a man. I have to make sure that I don't have benefit from that that animal. I'm gonna say, oh, we're gonna kill. We're gonna eat. The ox that killed the uh, shmero, you know that that's part of the mitzvah. Is not to, it's not that the mitzvah was performed. That is part of the mitzvah, not to have enjoyment from the ox. And those are the instances I had an um, instant. Right, we were learning by the shor niskal. I don't have a vinicham sham. I uh, it has to say la yachal. I don't think it needs to say, it would say in the middle of the street. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. We get into a complication there. That your holy answer is only going to work if you accept the opinion that holds that two um, two uh, sources can't be learned from. However, Almandam or Malamdam, but there is another opinion that says, no, I can learn from two sources. So what are you going to say? What do you mean that you can't have, uh, that you that you can have smell, you can have enjoyment from the smell of the Kutairis? What, what are you saying? Just because you have two sources, that say that you're not allowed to, and that you're trying to use that to say that therefore in other places you are allowed, but that's not so, because according to one opinion, two sources doesn't do it. Okay, the Gemara says, train you to exhibit. We actually, it's not the shnei ksubma bam kechat tarim alamdim, it actually, it says clearly in the Pasuk, it says, v'sam mai ksiv harufa. These two, it says you place it, and it also says the arufa. 
Now those are two miyutim. Those tell me that nothing else. Why do I need two miyutim? Maybe one miyut should be enough. I don't know. Ah, Taisa's question. If you have a miyut, why do you need two miyutim? Taisa says that if on one miyut would have told me only something that's similar to it. Uh, now that I have two, even things that aren't similar. What? Once the mitzvah is performed, you're allowed to have enjoyment. All right, now we go back to what we were ta- talking about before. We got this was a uh, digression. Um, what were we talking about before? A machlekes, a baya, and rava. If you didn't have a possible, if you didn't have another route to walk, but you ended up on the street uh, that has the incense of Avedah Zara, and you started to enjoy it. According to Rabbi Huda, is that considered forbidden? So the Gemara says like this: Tashma, Yinicha Yechnisa LeRavaka. If you brought a paraduma. The red, uh, the red cow that you need to use, the red heifer. You brought it. You brought it into a pen, a cow pen, with dasha. And while it was in there, it walked around on grain, and it, it uh, trampled, trampled the, the grain, which is threshing. So it says kshera. That's kosher because that's you're not allowed to do work with it. But this was there was no intention for that to happen. It just happened to be it. It, it walked in it, but that was no, not not your intention. Let's say you brought it into the pen because it needs to nurse and it needs to eat. And it also, you also had intention of while it's there, it's going to walk around and it's going to thresh. So then it's already psula. Then it's already invalid. You invalidated the paraduma by that intention. We have a problem over here because here you didn't have an option, right? You didn't have an option. Because it needed to eat, but you also had intention that it should that it should thresh, and it's possible. Who held who held that it's possible? Rava. Rava would say that it's considered forbidden because you had intention, right? Abaya would say, "Oh, intention doesn't matter. You didn't have an option, so intention doesn't matter." The Gemara says, or an answer for Rabbi, Shani Hasim Dixiv Ashele Yuvat Ba Mikal Makin. No, but there's a special Pasuk that says, even if there was no intention, or even if um, even if it happened without any intention, it's still going to be Asr. It's still going to be the, the, the Paradim is going to be possible. The Gemara says, Yachia Filarish Nami. You're getting yourself into a big uh, problem over here. Because you said if you brought it in, and it threshed without intention, so then it's kosher. You brought it in with intention to thresh, even though you needed to, because it needed to eat. You said it's puzzle. And the way you explained why is it puzzle, you said because it doesn't matter what your intention is. If it happens, it's puzzle. So if that's the case, that why in the ratio when it threshed, you, did you say it was kosher? Versus hale dami alaha shachan well, let's compare it to a different scenario. It says if a bird comes and lands on the top of the paraduma, it's not considered that it carried a load. It's going to be kosher. However, if it mates with the male, so then it's going to be possible. My time, what's the reason? So Amar Papa, Rav Papa says, Yiksiv avad bekarinan avad ada avid ba'iyu. It says, asher ubad ba, that wasn't worked. Now, the wording of the, the spelling of ubad is ayin beis dalid with the shura with the it says it's chaser so it said if you just, would just read it without knowing how to pronounce it it would say avad that you didn't actually go ahead and work so the gemara says Rav Papa says that if it would have said avad and it's pronounced avad written avad and pronounced avad then I would uh, that would mean that you have to actually go ahead and do the work with intention iksiv ubad ukrinan ubad if it would say it malay ubad and it was read ubad then everything would be us, sir. Even if a bird landed on it, it would be us, sir. But now that it says Avad, but it's read Ubad, then we're somewhere in the middle. It's the work that's done similar to the work that he does. Just like the work that he does, he does it on purpose for enjoyment. 
also it needs to be what he does for enjoyment. So therefore, he gets no enjoyment when a bird lands on it. He does get enjoyment if it mates, because then he'll have offspring. Um, and it does uh, get it. And if he didn't have any intention to thresh, then he doesn't care about it. But if he did bring it in to, to, to thresh as well, then that's going to make it also because it says Uba. Tashima, come and listen to Veda. It says about a lost object that was found and now you're taking care of it because you have to return it to the owner. It says, uh, A cloth or a garment needs to be uh, shaken, spread out, or else the moths, if you leave it in the closet and you don't have moth balls or cedar, whatever, so the moths are going to eat, eat up the thing. So you have to shake it out every uh, once in a while. So you spread it out. Um, but you're not allowed to spread it for your own purposes and say, oh, um, uh, let's do this, let's decorate the house. Right? That's, you're, not, you're only allowed to do it for the purposes of the garment itself, not for your purposes. Let's say guests are coming. Oh, you have this nice item that you found. Then you can't even do it to say, oh, this is an opportune time. I'll shake it out because I haven't, show, I haven't uh, spread it out in 30 days. I'll, I'll do it right now. The guests are coming. It's going to look perfect. So what are we seeing is that you're having kavana, but you didn't have an option. We're seeing that no option, layafshar and miskaven, is aser, deraya terava. That's what that's exactly what Rabbi held. The Bible would say it's not a problem. Shani Hasim the Kali lay over there. Over there. It's gonna be you're actually destroying it when you spread it out. It's not because of the kavana, it's nothing to do with kavana. When you spread it out, it's destroying it. Either because of Ayan Hara or because of Ganavim, people are going to see it. They're going to, they're going to steal it. Let's finish the with that. Tashima, start in a in a brayso. Meichri ksuos, meichun kedar kan vavatli eskavim b'cham pnei acham b'cham pnei acham. People that sell clothing, and this clothing happens to have shotness in it. So when they put it on to show what it looks like, they they're allowed to put it on as long as they're not intent, intending to protect themselves from the heat or, to gain. So. Um, or, or in the rain, they can't, and they can't put it on in the rain to protect them from the rain. They can't have personal benefit from the shotness, but they're allowed to model it. The Jew is allowed to model it to show because he's not, he's not wearing, he's not having a nos beged. Oh, so one second, not so. Um, but if you're a real machmer, you don't put it on at all. You just you you hang it on a stick and you show what it looks like. We're going back to the case before the first Lishna. Over here, you have other options. You see the Tznuim do it differently. They don't put it on. But the fact that you were not Mechaven, it's Efsher V'loy Mechaven. You had other possibilities, but you didn't have intention, and it was Mutter. Takasha and Rava, according to the first Lishna. Because Rava in the first Lishna said that, uh, that if it's, you have other possibilities in the Inat Mechaven, so according to Rava, it was going to be us, or according to Reb Shimon. We said Reb Shimon holds that the Inat Mechaven, it's Mutter, but Rava said that that's only if you didn't have other options. Reb Shimon was only Mata, if you didn't have, but here you had other options, and still it's Mutter. So it's a cash on that first, first version. Okay.